410 shot shell versus 40 smith and wesson and one might wonder why compare those two well a 410 shell is 41 caliber and the closest semi-automatic cartridge to 41 caliber is 40 smith and wesson or 10 millimeter so what i have today is some cellular and bellat ammunition here and i like to go within the same ammo brands just to try to be fair when i do these type of comparisons and it's not necessarily that i'm trying to be fair like it's a competition but i like to take something that's kind of average and normal like 40 smith and wesson because some people will forgo using something like that be like well i use something like this and it's a 410 shell so we're going to use our Smith & Wesson guns today, our Smith & Wesson M&P 40 2.0 with a 5-inch barrel, and then our Smith & Wesson Governor. That's a 2 and 3 quarter inch barrel, but a really long cylinder, so it's overall bullet travel. It's about like a full-size pistol when it comes to ballistics. But what we have here is our 180-grain 40 Smith & Wesson jacket at hollow point. I don't know if there's a rating on this box here or not. I don't see one, so... If I find that online, I'll list it right here. If not, then I don't know. Now, this stuff is interesting here. This is our two and three quarter inch shot shells. And this stuff was designed to be specifically for revolvers. You can see that on that, that photo on that box right there. Plus, you got that badge. I mean, that badge says everything. You know, that's like the seal of approval by elite SWAT ninja strike commandos, stuff like that. So... Looking at that, you should feel really secure by using this stuff. But what this stuff is, is it's a one, a single triple out buck, followed by 15 BB pellets. And I can't remember the, the diameter BB, but they're about eight and three quarter grains, as where a triple out buck is like um, 70 grains. So our total payload, I wrote it down here, 201.25 grains. And it's rated at 984 feet per second, 433 foot-pounds energy. That sounds about right for something like that. So I'm going to take that number because I am not going to chronograph this because the last time I chronographed the shot shell, the wad came out, hit my screen, busted my screen. I had another uh, YouTube supporter that was gracious enough to uh, send me the funds to get a new one. So I am done chronographing shot shells. But I am going to chronograph that 40 Smith & Wesson to see what we get out of that. And then I'm going to hit our 10% clear ballistic block here. I'm going to use an old block for this. I was going to use a new block, but I'm thinking that's nah, probably going to make a mess of that block with all those BBs in there. I might have to throw the thing away rather than sit there and pick through all of that. So we are going to do our best potential shot just in the plain clear ballistics to see what we get. And then after that, I'm going to do more of our real world simulation where we have four layers of cotton t-shirt in the front of this first three inches that represents our pectoral muscle off to that a quarter inch MDF to represent hitting ribs or sternum. And then I will shoot up my steel. I don't know how far away back I'm going to stand. It's going to kind of depend on how that shot shell patterns. Patterns. We'll see what it does up, up close, maybe back to 25 yards. So let's get started with this test. All right, I looked this ammo up. It's rated at 974 feet per second for a 180 grain jacket at a hollow point. So throw a five inch barrel. Let's see how close I get to 974 feet per second. 955, 931, 923, 916, 919, below rated velocity even out of a five inch barrel. But our recoil, that was very light. It, it would be hard to say that that was snappy. That was probably the same as most nine millimeter ammo. Now I'm gonna shoot that paper uh, with the shotgun shell just to see how it patterns at five yards or so but not through the chronograph. All right, I'm about five yards from the target. I do want to see where these hit before I shoot them into gel, see if they scatter too much. So let's see what these will do. We can go single action to aim center mass with this. Very low recoil, a lot less recoil than what I was thinking. Um, it's kind of hard to tell where the actual ball projectile impacted, but... Uh, Keep going. Let me aim upper right for that upper right square. Upper left. Lower left. Lower right. So looks like the ball kind of impacted. Um, I was just a little bit off from center from where I was aiming. And those BBs look like they scattered around quite a bit so let's start a ballistics gel block with these 
see how they compare. Also, I wanted to showcase ejection. Perfectly fine with those. All right, I'm gonna shoot from pretty close because when I go with the 410, I don't want to uh, uh, miss that block. So, Forty Smith and Wesson. All my years of doing this, I kind of foresee a straight pass through through 35 inches of gel here, but uh, let's see what we get. Hit it with our 410. Pleasantly surprised there with the light recoil we were dealing with. I thought for sure that would just zip right through. So with this, I want to make a point here. One of these shells, it's not wanting to turn. And this is one of those things, you know, Mac once talked about this and I don't like the way he was talking about it because he was taking like the cheapest bird shot, foreign bird shot or something like that. And he was showing how revolvers are not reliable. This is more of a, a 410 or a 45 Colt that can chamber 410 issue with foreign ammo. I've never had a single malfunction where I had this issue like this with like Hornady Critical Defense, a Federal Triple Lot Buck, um, Winchester, PDX-1, Defender, stuff like that. But it happens here because it's foreign ammo. And you sometimes see that, so... We'll have to figure out which one of these it is. So I believe it's... The shell here didn't want to chamber right. So I'm going to get up real close on this here. still a little bit sticky so that alone would would rule this out for me but let's see what we get with our ballistic performance anyway plain clear ballistics <laughs> yeah you might wonder why i did that like that that's why that thing hit me right here the wad came back so let's take a look at that All right, so we have some interesting, interesting performance. What is very, very interesting is the main projectile with the 40 Smith & Wesson and with the buckshot went to the identical penetration depth. That's really funny. Uh, but what I'm seeing here is I'm pre pleasantly surprised with that 40 Smith & Wesson because it did a lot of damage. It looks like we have good expansion. We're at about 14 and a quarter inches. Now, like I said before, this projectile I went the same. The triple up buck went to 14 and a quarter inches. Very nice. And our little pellets here, most of them are, I would say, I'm going to go take an average here, right in between them. Most of them are about four and three quarter inches in. You know, our deepest one's about six inches in. There's some that look like about four inches in. So those would cause some pain and they those would not be lethal in and of themselves most of the time. But that triple out buck would be so let's put on our fabric and our mdf and see how they compare now all right fabric and mdf this is sometimes where everything goes wrong and the bullet won't perform so 40 smith and west let's see what it does all right let's try our 410 now i'm going to do that again what you might see there is like what is going on so i'm going to try to confirm that take a look all right now 410 410 through our mdf what this does. I'm gonna get up right up here. Let's go take a look. All right, so there was definitely a one-off going on there with that 40 Smith & Wesson. Um, and that one-off was that we had really good expansion. Here, here we are. This is um, our first 40 Smith & Wesson. It got beautiful expansion that first three inches, but because it's so big and it's not a lot of power, we only penetrated to eight inches. Now, the second time I did that, you know, we went through... Um, right here 
and we can see that's more of a controlled expansion and that did well it did not expand that well but it went to about 15 and a half inches so considering this box of ammo is 50 hollow points for i paid about 25 for it that's not bad that's not bad performance and when we look at our 410 though this is a little bit different here because our 410 um what happened was you know after those first three inches all those bbs were stopped by our rib simulation so that again confirmed that it's be unlikely that these would be lethal they're barely denting that in but we went through right here with our ball and um or right here i should say and uh that did a little bit better but we're, we're still only looking at about eight and a quarter inches so that's a little bit uh subpar for what i want to see with something like this so overall i'm going to say for what it is the 40 is doing pretty well the 410 uh, let's shoot the steel and see how it patterns before i judge that all right so i wanted to show some things here and i didn't see some things in here that i should have saw now here is our 40 smith and wesson through our gel did pretty well and the thing is, I didn't realize when I saw this here, this was just the um, jacket at that distance of, you know, we had three inches plus whatever this would have been, you know, about, I think I said something like seven and three quarter inches. It was just the jacket. The actual bullet separated the lead core and it went up to here. So adding in three inches for our first piece here, what we see here is the actual penetration we got with that first MDF shot was right there at about 14 and a half inches. It did pretty well, it just separated here. And our second MDF shot, you know, we have more of a controlled expansion, but it did not over penetrate. And that's partly just because it was not a particularly powerful, um, a powerful cartridge, powerful round. Now I did dig out a couple of these little BBs here a little bit of flattening there. Our first shot with our gel. Not a whole lot of deformation. That's what I was saying before. I think those BBs are just more of a filler because it didn't deform that much. You know, typical lead balls deform more than that. So I think those BBs are more of a cool filler rather than they are anything that's gonna do good ballistically. Now with our MDF shot here, this flattened a little bit more. This is what you typically see in plain gel with like those three double, triple out, you know, three triple out pellet rounds but when you have you know only one of them you have all that weight you know 131 grains made up of this it makes a good filler so that's what you get with those projectiles close up all right i'm about 15 yards from the target i figured i'd come back just a little bit further with all those bbs you know you never know if they're just gonna like bounce back or what so not going very fast so 40 smith and wesson Let's see how this does for me at this uh, 15 yards. There we are. It was reliable, even though it was very flat nose. It was very reliable. Now with our shot shell here, I think that one shell might have just been a one-off because I took that out. I put other stuff in here. I don't see any issues. With the rotation on this i you know i was cocking it and whatnot so i would suggest if you're going to carry a shotgun shell in a handgun that you know you learn that technique of decocking a hammer properly where you put your thumb in between the frame and the hammer tap the trigger and let the thing down so even if you slipped off you know that's not going to go off and then also you have the hammer block in there so if that slipped off as long as your fingers away from the trigger it's not going to go off so i would suggest doing that Six times here, or seven. Make sure there's no hang-ups. I didn't see any real hang-ups there with the actual rubbing behind the frame. So let's see how this patterns here. I'm gonna go single action one shot, see how it patterns center mass. I'll keep going here. Wow. 
So what they say about shotguns is not necessarily true. But you can just spray and pray because I was kind of doing that, but yeah, I had a pretty good uh, uh, center alignment on that sight. And uh, it was still off. That was interesting. So let me back it up just a little bit more. And I am seeing an issue here. This could have been part of the reason here why that one shell, you know, it, it could slightly be off spec just a little bit and it would have normally been fine. But my uh, cylinder rod here has gotten loose. So that's probably why that one shell had an issue here. It's gonna be hard to tighten it fully out here in the field. But I'll put that one shell back in and we'll see if it does any better at some more distance. All right, I put that one shell back in after tightening up the cylinder rod and everything and it seems fine, seems like it rotates. So I think it was just my gun and not the ammo. So my judgment about that ammo, I'll take that back. Um, this does seem to be a very light load and that's kind of what they do for handgun rounds is they don't max them out because when you max them, you know, max that pressure out, they swell too much for revolvers, so. 25 yards, just gonna aim center mass, see if I can get a hit single action. All right, so it looks like that, that ball hit every time. Now it wasn't Super consistent. One was a little bit high. Now five of them though are pretty close down there. I don't see any BB impacts. So I'm not really sure that adding those BBs is really going to do a whole lot. Now with our 40, I want to back it up a little bit further because this felt like pretty good and pretty accurate ammo. I want to see what it does at some more distance. All right, 75 yards. You know, this is just for fun, just for practice. Now I will say in a defensive situation, if I did have to take a shot from from 75 yards, I would want my five inch pistol and I probably would want a caliber like 40 Smith and Wesson and 180 grain because over distance, 180 grain loses less energy, it retains more momentum than a nine millimeter. So let's see if I can make any hits here. 75 yards. All right, so I really like the feel of that ammo. I would say that's a pretty good ammo overall because, you know, $24, $25 for 50 rounds of hollow points is pretty good. And you could say, well, I can match that price over on some specialty website where they have some old, you know, old stock of gold dot and that's the same price. However, with this, what I'm seeing is our energy is more like a nine millimeter. So for all intents and purposes, this felt exactly like shooting a nine millimeter. There might be a slightly more muzzle flip, but I mean, it basically felt like a nine millimeter. Yet it's a 40 caliber. You have a bigger bullet. It's gonna retain more momentum at distance. It's gonna go through auto glass without veering off as much as nine millimeter. It's gonna consistently penetrate better with expansion. Now we did see that one low expanding round. I don't know how to account for that, but that was kind of weird. But overall, I'm gonna say this is pretty good ammo. And that's something that, you know, people don't always talk about is they wanna push it, push it, push it, push it until it's as fast as it can go. And that sometimes what you'll have is a round that's not very accurate out of most guns. As well as hand loaders, you know, you wanna push around to a certain point. A lot of times the groups will be big, it'll get a little more powerful, they'll tighten up. And sometimes you start going even more powerful, they start loosening up just from, just the way that they are, uh, not even on a shooter, but just the way those loads are. So I'm gonna say these are loaded pretty nicely. I like them. Now when it comes to that shotgun shell, that's kind of interesting, you know. I'm not really sure what the purpose of that would be. It showed kind of like a home defense, I think, illustrations on the box. I don't know. I think you could find something a lot better than that because I, honestly, I don't know what those BBs are really gonna do other than their filler, you know. Um, if you didn't have those in there that round ball would that would flatten out and it'd be less accurate so 
overall that round ball is what's doing the damage and it's pretty close to being adequate but once you hit a bone it's not and those bb's are really not adequate across the board either way the only thing that this is going to really excel at is probably hit probability at a little distance like if you got in a gunfight across the yard at you know 25 yards you're probably going to hit your attacker with bb's but still i don't see really what that's going to do that's anything positive you know, it might be a good hunting round or something like that for a small game, but I'm just not seeing where it's something I would ever want to use for home defense. If I had to choose between that and something else that governor would shoot that wasn't a shotgun shot, I'd just put some 45 Colts in it. Um, but if I was going to pick the buckshot, it'd be like Federal or the Winchester PDX or, you know, something like that. So that's what you get today. Very interesting test to see how this stuff performs. I was pleasantly surprised with the 40 Smith & Wesson, but, you know, the shotgun shells, yeah, I kind of expected what we saw. Not great, but I guess they do their 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 duty. So <laughs> that's what you get today. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.